Law, also known as Forever Emmanuel, is a 1976 Italian film directed by Louis Jack Rollet and Roberto Piazzolli. Even though the film was advertised as directed by Emmanuel Arson at an institute in Manila, researchers and ecotourists trade stories about the Mara tribe who live on a remote island and have an annual festival of rebirth in which some of the tribe forget who they are and begin again. Lo is the daughter of the institute's director. She is a free spirit who has captured the fancy of Nicola, a European photographer. After a courtship in which the voyeuristic Nick indulges Laura's exhibitionism and love freedom, they set up for Maraland with Gauthier, an anthropologist, and his philosophical lover Mirat. As they approach the Mara on the night of rebirth, who of the group will actually join the tribe to begin life anew? In a way, this is one of the great iceberg crashes of the movie industry, and in par with Waterworld in terms of held hope. If you are interested not just in movies but also in the story behind them, then this is a most worthwhile film. It represents the effort of a Hollywood studio to cut in on the highly profitable Emmanuel franchise, which was so profitable that it has been credited with saving the entire French cinema industry. Instead of pulling off another unlicensed Emmanuel ripoff, they dug into their pocket and put some serious money on the table and hired Emmanuel herself to do the writing, acting and directing. What this meant in practice was that the actual author of the Emmanuel book, Louis Jack Rollet, would write the script and direct while his wife Mariat, under whose pseudonym Emmanuel Arson, the Emmanuel book had been published, and who had consequently become an icon of eroticism, would appear extensively in a supporting role. And as a little extra for the American market, none other than legend Linda Lawless would star in the title role. But it all sort of went horribly wrong from there on. First off, a drug addict Linda Lawless became a born again Christian after signing on and consequently refused to do any nudity. In fact, she even took umbrage against a statue of Venus de Milo on the set because it had exposed body. Not a good stance to take if you are going to star in a Sopko movie. Poor Linda, this was the chance of her lifetime, her single possibility to finally cash in a bit on her notoriety by doing a nice, harmless movie, and she ill-advisedly threw it out of the window. Instead of Linda, the producer hired French actress Annibel, which was clearly a lucky stroke. Annibel, in contrast to Loveless, could act and despite her young age had the brain of a seasoned erotica producer trapped inside her pneumatic body. Unfortunately, now it was author and co-director Louis Jack Rollet who played up. He didn't just want to make a hot movie like Emmanuel, which is exactly what the were expecting of him, but wanted to forge a visual pamphlet of his swinging philosophy which the backer had no interest in. Eventually, he withdrew his name from the project, which is why direction is credited to Anonymous, which in turn really impeded its marketing. Since the movie is visually first class, I bet you that consequently a lot of money went down some river in the Philippines. After all this, I expected a conquer of a movie, but I was pleasantly surprised Law is in large part a very hot movie and had the potential to be a lot better than Emmanuel. Annibel is absolutely stunning and she is well matched by Al Cliver. Law's advantage is that unlike Emmanuel, it does not try to create the image of an extremely libertine woman who is ready for anything once the Lala music start. In particular, there are practically no scenes of penetrative love film as Sopko like in Emmanuel. 
which in my opinion always looks a bit silly and tedious and never really works. The cinematography and setting are absolutely stunning and make Apocalypse now look like married with children. Same for the actors and some of the music is actually first rate, which in an erotic movie is rarer than hand's teeth. They obviously spend a lot of money on law. This is not just another cheap Emmanuel rip-off. Unfortunately, like an Emmanuel, there are some very extended scenes of Gibri's philosophy which really drag on and make your brain bleed. There is also one pretty tough scene in which Lo and her boyfriend go on their hotel room. A member of their expedition asks Lo to join him in his room and before her boyfriend I see Agri. While she is having noisy love with the interloper, her boyfriend then elaborate that her pleaser is my pleaser. This movie is a lot about swinging and the correspondent mentality, which I guess many viewers will find hard to stomach. I certainly did, and there are admittedly some snag in the movie. There is one very subtle and completely incoherent scene in which a transvestite pilot a helicopter over Manila. They pick up his girlfriend and then he suggests to put the helicopter on autopilot so that she and Locke can get it on. This is Ed Wood stuff. And at the end of the movie they clearly ran out of money an idea so it end with a hastily thrown together dream sequence. So I hear you beg of me, what's married the chick who supposedly wrote all the Emmanuel book under the pseudonym Emmanuel Arson like? Seeing her is a bit like having the real Superman appear in a Superman movie. She has a pretty extensive role as mirror, a foxy oriental babe who is in a threesome relationship with a blonde chick and a professor. She is a very hot woman and it is no surprise that her husband according to the producer was but sorted with her. She has several erotic scenes which somewhat softer than other scenes in the movie. You can however tell that she is less of an actress and more of a model because her timing and delivery are a bit lackluster. What's great about it is the atmosphere, the music, the location, the cinematography and the beautiful cast. The story is non-existent for sure, but with these movies it doesn't really matter. The pace in language and the setting are exotic. The film has a lot going for it. Unfortunately it also has a few things going against it. The first thing is that the gorgeous Annibal and the handsome Alcliva have no chemistry whatsoever. Because the two are playing a couple and are on screen for almost the entire length of the film. The lake of chemistry between the two is a definite liability. They sure cap their attraction to each other from showing on screen. The other problem with law is that some love scenes are just ineffective or even ridiculous. There is one love scene that stands out as one of the silliest I have ever seen in any soft lake. Our young blonde couple are picked up by a helicopter pilot who happened to be a cross dresser. The pilot flies over the city to pick up his girlfriend and they have love of shot in the helicopter in midair. And Al Cliver is filming all of this with his 16mm camera. We later see that 16mm footage being edited on a Moviella while the footage roll Al and Annie start making out. This scene is actually good but the footage on the screen behind them was at times too much. Watching the footage of the crossdresser getting it on with his bimbo while piloting the helicopter almost had me rolling on the floor laughing out loud. Is this supposed to be erotic or believable in any way? The last thing I want to see is a woman pleasuring a man in drag. Certainly when the man in drag make for such an ugly woman while piloting a helicopter no less. All and any getting it on was cool as was the music during the entire scene. I just wish the footage on the editing screen wasn't so silly. Speaking of drag, another dull plot point in law, which really dragged the movie to a crawl are all those moments with the great awesome Maria Guerini and his two wives. 
a merry threesome is an interesting idea but it hardly register here as hot or even interesting the two women are sort of dull and we rarely see the three having love in fact also keep his cloth on for almost the entire film even when he is with anibel this is another minor complaint about law there is nudity but it is not as much as other film of the same era it just needed more skin to punch it up except for those minor complaint and the drag queen moment law is actually very watchable I say strangely because it is rather a ludicrous bit of sopko flop, a genre I am not particularly interested in. The dialogue is pompously and nonsensically philosophical, and the plot completely extraneous. What it does achieve is a wonderfully hypnotic and thoroughly pleasant mood. The scenery, soft focus nudity, and wonderful score all contribute to a strange and extremely watchable exercise. in a short of filmmaking seldom seen today it is truly one of my great guilty pleasure i was fortunate enough to find it on an old laser disc and i have watched it more times than i think is healthy this is a rather bizarre movie in that it was co-directed by the real life emmanuel arson who wrote the influential autobiographical novel emmanuel on which just jackins even more influential french film emmanuel was based The other director however is the primo Ovidio Assontes who was responsible for the exorcist rip off beyond the door and the jaw rip off tentacles here he is basically ripping off jackins emmanuel in collaboration with the original female author the strange result of all this is a film that is as allegedly arty and laughably pretentious as the official french emmanuel series but every bit as laurent and derivative as the many italian rip off of the same series the movie concern a mini skirt clad underwear averse young woman lo who is traipsing about the philippines on some half as anthropological expedition to find a lost native tribe she is encouraged by her photographer boyfriend to have love with anybody and everybody usually while he filmed the encounter Belle was a very pretty French girl with a fantastic body who always looked incredibly lovely despite the bleached blonde crew cut any Lennox held or she always wore she was starring in and sometime even writing movie like this from the time she was barely 18 years old she also appear in John Rollins Leap of Blood Massimo Del Manos End of Innocence Ruggiero Diodato's House by the Age of the Park and with Laura Jameson in Velluto Nero. Emmanuel Arson herself also appear in the movie and she too has a plethora of nude scene. The real problem though as other have said is the lame brain plot of this movie which is pretty boring and really adds nothing at all to the eroticism. Despite some really scenic location in the Orient and some sporadically energetic music by Franco Michelizzi, this film doesn't quite reach the level of Jody Amato's similar effort while staying just about as trashy. The author of the original book Emmanuel, The Choice of a Woman, Emmanuel Arson, directed and had a smallish role in this film, which mostly showcases a very young Annibel. as she get in a variety of oddball love situation her boyfriend played by zombies al cliver actually approve of her sleeping around and even persuaded her to continue her practices even after the two of them are married also maria guerini dropped by as a professor who is so usually married simultaneously to two women one of whom is played by arson herself despite beginning promisingly and having a few hilarious line of dialogue like can you see me with the naked eye i can see you better naked the film samble along plotlessly up until the less than spectacular finale much like the amato's emmanuel and the last cannibal the main character are all in search of some lost tribe but don't get your hope up there is no violence at all in this film and not much love either for that matter co-director and co-writer Emmanuel Arson is the one and only Emmanuel who would write the autobiography which would then be turned into a massive hit by Just Jackin 
and be reworked so many times over the years that most people will forget that the story wasn't originally meant to tackle power in raincoat. This serious tale has the beautiful Annabel playing law, a young woman who goes around the Philippines on an anthropological expedition to find a lost tribe. Her boyfriend wants her to be free, so he recommends she have love with every man and woman that she can. Also known as Forever Emmanuel, this is yet another exploitation film that features non-stop love and nudity. But at the same time, after the first few scenes, you can't help but get bored. This movie here is a complete bore from pretty much start to finish because there is nothing ever going on that makes any sense, nor does anything happen to make you feel as if you are using your time for a good thing. This movie is so incredibly pointless 